Hello everyone, welcome back to another video by Eclip on my YouTube channel. So, as the time passes and the more videos I do every week, I'm getting better and better, which is a good thing. Basically, I'm learning a lot about the whole process, about editing, about... I'm getting more comfortable as well about talking about all this stuff and from getting your comments and reading them I'm getting better and better in understanding what are the most important things that I should talk about and so on so on so because of that uh, some of my first videos were about creating the baselines and I can say that they are the most successful videos in order of the views so when I rechecked those videos, I saw that they have a pretty nice content. They were uh, pretty good educational wise, but the whole production about them with all how I edited these videos and what were the quality of the sound <clears throat> and also the way I was thinking, talking and going through that video was a little bit different as in that time I used to write everything down. First I was writing the blog and then I was when I was recording video because I didn't have much of the confidence and just that moment when you turn on the camera and that something is recording was causing me that I just got this uh, freeze moments and all these written things <coughs> were a really good thing for me in that time as I just knew where should I continue, uh, where I stopped and so on. But now when I did more and more videos, I realized that all these videos, when I just turn on the camera and I just do it freestyle, I do prepare something before that video about something that I will talk about and so on, so on. So I realized that some of the videos, it will be nice if I remake them in order just they have this nice content where you can see me, where I can edit it, where they can look a little bit better and also much better flow because the the last several videos I basically do not edit much I just change the camera position and I do switch from the screen to the camera and so on but I'm not chopping anything and I'm not making even when I make mistake I now usually just come back and make a correction of what I said without chopping everything and I believe that this is much much better way as the flow of the video is much better so uh, with that said uh, this video is going to be about making the baseline using serum and for this video I'm not going to use any Cubase native plugins so which means that if you are using Ableton, Bitwig, Logic, uh, Studio One, so on so on, Fruity Loops and so on you will be able to recreate this video I will not post any Presets, maybe I will post the preset for EQ, but I will come to that topic a little bit later on But basically it will be the best from you and trust me This is the best way because now when I open the serum when I show you the preset of the serum You will be able to see all the positions where and it will be much better if you just go through all the process Loading the preset is easy, but learning how to do it the best way is if you do it by your own so when it comes to this baseline, uh, I used to make the baselines in Serum, but then when I switched to SM9, which increased my listening insanely a month up upwards, and I started to realize that I do not like much the Serum filter sound. When it comes to waveform synthesis and everything, the Serum is, is one of the best VSTs out there, but then I realized that filter it could be much better and also when I use the filter I have always the problems should I use 12 dB, 18 dB or 24 I used to use 18 because it was kind of in the middle because when you have a doubt like should you use 12 dB or 24 the best and easiest way to solve that dilemma is to choose something in the middle so but after that, I realized that there's much better way, much more precise way when it comes to designing the the baseline, actually doing the synthesis. So let's open the serum. And this is going to be without any, any processing on the inserts. So 
what I did, envelope basically on 200 milliseconds with minus 12 dB of the sustain. I love always baselines to have this first attack and then just to reduce the body because when the sustain is always on 100% or on the maximum, it just creates a lot of mess later on and it just it doesn't have this moment when we have all the 16 that we hear all the 16s as the punches as like uh, when you open this the sustain on the main envelope it just they glue together and when you start changing notes it just makes a little bit mess so this is my best setup i came so far with envelope one is that you just put it on minus 12 that way if you use longer notes if you just press and hold it it will have the signal but it will be reduced for minus 12 semitones or minus 12 decibels which is really really nice thing to do when it comes to oscillator the best for me in uh, serum is this basic mini because it does not provide you a lot of low end the standard the regular the default preset which is just a saw form it's just full saw form and it prov provides you a lot a lot a lot of low end which is not that good for the bass lines as the bass line in Psytrance is a combination I talk about this modern production that is popular today is that it has a lot of plucks a lot of mids that it plucks a lot and that it doesn't have a lot of this low end under it and it is much easier to mix later on so i realized that it's really really smart that you chose carefully which waveform you will use even if you use i will show you in this one even if you use this os this standard waveform which will provide you a lot of low end you just can use this bend plus and minus and on this side when you pull it on the right side it will provide you more low end but when you move it on the left side it will provide you less low end it will be the same as if you did if we turn this off because some of you will probably say like if we go to the pan and then you reduce the first harmonic but you see that you get the same shape but to be honest i prefer much more to use this band plus minus because then later on you can tweak it much much more precise so band plus minus if you use this one but if you use basic mini there's not there's no need to use any of this band plus minus and even I have it on, but I'm not using it. It stays on the middle, as you can see. So, when it comes to filter, I used 18, MG low 18, cutoff is on 364 hertz, resonance down, drive down, and envelope 2 is connected to the cutoff. And as you can see, 63 milliseconds, but I'm not using the, the curve that is like I'm not using this kind of curves anymore because I realized, you will see right now, I'm using two different filters. And by using two different filters is what we are getting is that you can apply two different envelopes on the same channel, so in the baseline. And why is that? When we use 24 dB per octave, it has nice click, but then something in between the body and the, uh, and the, the, the beginning, the first punch of the transient of the baseline, and the body this position in between of them is i do not like how it sounds because when you use a higher slope then you have the click and it straight go to this body it doesn't have this transitional period in between and when you use 12 db it has amazing this in between but then the body has a lot of information like bzz, like buzzing a little bit like we have like we didn't close the the cutoff enough and then when you move cutoff, then you lose this moment. So the best way for me is always to have two different filters on the baseline. Why? Because the first one will decide how the plug will sound. And the second one will be, you will be deciding where is this trans uh, transitional period is happening in between of this plug and the body. It might sound complicated, but if you just try it on, you will see that it sounds much better because... When you design your baseline on solo, when the kick in the bass, you will probably close it a little bit more. But then when you start adding more material, it happens that baseline becomes a little bit dull and that you need to open. And then just with one filter, when you start moving this 
cut off up and down, I had the problems to find exact point and basically I couldn't find the best sounding point. When I started using two filters, then I just needed to, with a decay, to set up the perfect one. So I will use now 12 even if I used 18 and I will turn off this, this second. And now the second thing is I am applying the filter on the FX MG Low 6 only. I mean you turn it on and then envelope 3 connected to it and the position of cutoff here, just a second, is 290 hertz. And it goes down and as you can see here, 33 milliseconds. And this way I found that this is the best way. I'm sorry, there's some clicks on the on my audio, probably because of the CPU, because this channel is a little bit longer. But anyway, I will just try to turn off some of the plugins. All right. Okay, just turn off the Omnisphere. Okay. Let's see if it have solved the problem. So that will be all from the side of the, yeah, and also velocity. I'm always connecting to the level of the oscillator. That way, with reducing the velocity on the MIDI, you just get the less <coughs> volume on each note. From that side, everything is, yeah, and also the phase goes on the beginning. And I believe that I explained this because in this moment where the waveform is up, this is the moment when click is happening. So if we set up this phase position over here, it will need to start from this point and it will need this much time to rise and to come to this point where the click is happening. So I do not want that because that means that then when you move the baseline down, uh, in uh, lower notes, this waveform will be longer and longer. And that means that you will have a kind of a attack all the time. So it will happen that if you set it on this position over here and then when you start changing the notes you will see that the click is just louder on some notes and on some is not. So in order to solve this you just need to set on this point where it cross from one side to another and this is the moment when click is happening and it will over start from that point and you will always have the nice sounding click. And as you could hear I already set the jumping bass line over here just that you can see, that you can hear that every note has the nice pluck and that this click is happening on the same notes exactly on the same position. Okay, so the first plugin I used for the processing is M Transient MB. This plugin is a replacement for Cubase Envelope Shaper, Multiband Envelope Shaper. And I must say that those two plugins are almost the same. I did the A-B testing. I won't bothering with you right now. But basically, the guys who are not using Cubase, the M Transient MB is a really, really nice tool for designing your baseline. And I will show you just by turning on this plugin how much it, it increased the sound of the baseline. So all those multiband plugins are the best for designing your bass lines as they are changing the phase. Actually this position in between the first band and the second band is the one that will change the phase a lot because this crossfade in between of them, you can read about it, but in you just need to accept the fact that the best way to design your baseline is just with the multibands as that way they will change your sound a lot. Sorry, that was my fault. So this is the first one. So if I just AB this and as you can see the attack, this is the, the where you are, if you bring it up, this you will make the louder, the transient louder from 1k till to, till 5k or this one from 250 till 1k and so on so on but everything is on the zero as you can see so i just applied this plugin and just set the phase on 252.2 hertz 
Now the second one is the R bass from Waves. And I do not know exactly what this plugin does, but it also changed the phase a lot. So now when I say change the phase, there are the moments where I do not want my bassline to change the phase. And there are the moments where I really want my bassline to change the phase. So when I'm in the sound designing mode, when I start coloring, when I'm uh, shaping the, my bassline, this is the moment where I will want that my phase is changing all the time. And I will use several different multiband plugins in order to shape this kind of phase that sounds... Uh, I use the word plastic because this is the explanation I get and when I said this in previous videos somebody asked what do you mean by plastic? Uh, without any processing over here Baseline sounds just organic or some kind of uh, natural, not that much, but natural. And the more these multibands I apply, it just gets like more plastic in a way of more powerful. And there's something which just reminds me of plasticness. Maybe it's a wrong word, but this is my way of trying to explain what's what's happening with, with the sound. So basically, when you insert the R bass, Usually I just set up the, in this case is 60, 65 hertz and minus 17.4, the intensity of this one. But basically when you move this left and right, there are some changes in the phase as well. And I also do not want to go inside the technical uh, showing you the waveform and so on. But when I did the, all the researches, there's something really powerful happening with the phase and shaping of the baseline notes. And also it increases the low end in some really, really good way. And now we are coming to this point where all of you will probably, if I didn't explain, would ask me why I'm using Equilibrium. Equilibrium is the EQ plugin from DMG Out Audio. And I just used the low cut for this, for this case. And basically I use this EQ only in two cases. And this is when I really want my baseline to change the face, as I said just a few moments ago. But this EQ, it changed the face in a different way than FabFilter Pro Q3, than any other EQs that I've been using. Uh, now we come back to that plasticness that I said. And this EQ is kind of making more plastic sound. And I will use it in some moments. Basically, I will try to use the low cut from this EQ in order to change the, the phase in that way. But it doesn't mean that I will use it always. Sometimes it will change it in a way that is good. Sometimes it will not. So basically, when I'm looking for a perfect combination of the processing of the bass line, I'm trying to play with all these plugins that are changing and shaping the phase and the shape of the bass line in that way and then I will just turn them off, try to tweak until I get the best sounding results. There is no secret formula and there is not much of the science. Basically, I need to stop making saying basically. <laughs> so, uh, my approach in this is that I will play I know what all of those plugins are doing. This is the most important thing. So when you apply some plugins on any sound, I advise you that you exactly know what is happening. And there's not much of the producers, to be honest, that know exactly what's happening when they apply some of the plugins. They know it sounds better, but they won't know why it sounds better. And it is not just for you to be smarter when you talk about with your friends. It is when you apply it that you, when you know what happens with it, with the sound, that way you will be much, much better in manipulating, in getting the better, best possible results with it. So I know that this EQ is changing the phase a lot and I will put it only when I want it to change the phase a lot. So I didn't apply the low cut over here just to get rid of the lowest frequencies. If I wanted to do that, I will use FabQ3 with linear phase. 
And this thing I will do later on when it comes for a mixing section. But this process over here, it doesn't have anything with the mixing of the bass line. This process is only sound designing of the bass line. And now we come to biggest minus that Cubase has and that I really miss is that I would like to have all of those plugins inside the one slot because I would like to turn on and turn off all of those plugins just in order to sound design and later on I want to have all of those inserts for a mixing section and that way I would be able to do it and if if something is missing in Cubase that I can find is some kind of rack rack slot where I would be able to insert several different plugins and to turn them off and turn them on in just one knob. There are some third-party plugins, but this is a pretty complicated. I believe that Cubase is supposed to have this as you can do it in Ableton just by grouping those plugins and in other DAWs you are able to do that as well. Okay, enough talking. Let's go to here Equilibrium and what it does. So when you turn it off, basically what I'm hearing is that it has more low end and it is not because there's some mistake, it's just because this low cut is set up on 31 Hz, basically it does not remove a lot of the low end, but it shapes the phase in that way that as a feedback we are getting more low end. Not more, but in a nicer way. So the next plugin in a chain is Vitamin. And this plugin is for me must. If there are any plugins that I will always insert on my baseline, our base, there are some cases I won't insert it, but vitamin, it will go always. As just moving this position over here, it changed the phase that that good that creates my baseline to sound always much, much better. And also later on, if I want to add more click on it, I'll just need to move this. And I will leave a little bit of click for now. Basically, I do not want because we still didn't come to the EQ. And this point over here is EQing. And I need to talk a little bit about EQing as... It's been almost a year since I want to create the video about EQing. And the more I think about it, I come to the same conclusion that EQing is something that cannot be learned. There's nothing I can tell you about EQing in a way of you should do it like this. Because EQing is just shaping our frequent range on each of those channels in a way that we like it. And also it is really connected to the listening. And we, when we say listening, it is connected to your ears, uh, how your ears are trained, how good uh, do you hear, but also it is connected to your DA converters because DA converters are the ones that are translating the digital image on your speakers. So this is the first point uh, for listening in between computer and your speakers. So when you put a sound card and when you put it, what you say output, basically those outputs are DA converters. You have, the sound is not possible to keep on the computer because sound is happening on the, in the timeline as well. So you just can keep the image of the sound on your computer. So with the waveform, when you open it and when you see the waveform, basically you're looking on the picture of that waveform. So when you press space, there's something in between of your hard drive where your image is stored and something needs to translate this image. Something needs to tell to your speakers how it will translate all of this. So something that will tell your speakers what to do with this image in order that your speakers produce the sound. Basically to, to start moving in order that they make a pressure on the air so that you can hear that that uh, the digital image. So 
not many of you, of producer will speak about DA converters and a lot of them will tell you that this is a bad thing or that it, it doesn't really matter but I'm telling you this is the most important part of the process I had a friend who had amazing gear amazing compressors everything and they wasn't satisfied with their sound as they were like something is wrong you know and I just said to them like you invested a lot in all the processing equipment but connection with the computer and all this stuff is terrible as they just used some regular DA converters and when they changed all of them all this gear started to work much much better anyway I just wanted to mention this as this is uh, something that you won't find that much on YouTube and when it comes to equipment and if you are always asking why do I why I don't have a lot of hardware stuff is that because I invested a lot in and not a lot but I invested mostly in the DA converters as they are the most important part of the chain the your uh, speakers are connected to DA and also because I'm using the summing mixer I also have the apogee that is sending those outputs to sum inside the, my summing mixer and this is why my mixer sounds pretty nice as well so yeah sorry I just moved from the topic but anyway so EQing is not something that can be learned basically it's connected to your listening to your speakers DA converters and also the treated room so there's probably a lot of you who are struggling with EQing and I know that it can be really frustrating I was frustrated so much because I was just moving all these bands left and right and I didn't know where 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 to set them uh, and I thought that maybe I do not hear but I, I had all these mind games in my inside my brain thinking about maybe I do not know how to do it maybe I do not hear well enough but when I upgraded when I finished all the acoustics in my studio and when I upgraded from Focal Solo B6 to SM9 everything just stopped all the frustration that I had just stopped so you need to understand there's a lot a lot of people on the internet saying that equipment is not important that is your skills and I tell you that is both. The, we cannot separate this because if you hear, if you sit in really, really good studio with amazing speakers, with amazing acoustics, and you start working on this one, and then you sit in your room with your laptop and some uh, low budget sound card and low budget. Uh, speakers and not treated room you will see you will be sure that you will do much much better work in this high-end studio so it's all together it is about the the gear but it is also how you use this gear and it is also about your how your ins are trade so we cannot divide all of this and all this talks about is the equipment uh can you do it without the good equipment? Yes, you can do it, but you cannot do it good enough as you would do with the good equipment. And that's this, the end of it. So, all of you, if you are having a frustration about not being able to, to, to do EQing properly, then you just need to understand that if you didn't invest a in your studio, in your room, in your speakers, in your DA converters, that you shouldn't expect the high-end results as well. Anyway, so... The EQing is just like that. But basically just a direction. When I EQ the baseline, usually there's a low cut. Sometimes it will be two low cuts, as you can see. And it is also on zero latency. It is because I want it that way, as when I put on linear phase, it just didn't sound good enough, so on. So there's a reduction of 94 and the most of the things will happen in this low mid area 300 500 400 this frequency 250 this is now the game where you need to set it up as you want but you can see this picture and maybe you can try to recreate it and i will just tell you that this low cut is at 6 db per octave on 25 hertz and another one is on 34.7 at 24 dB per octave. This one doesn't do anything. This one doesn't do anything. This one is at 94 at minus 2.7. 
277 minus 2.3, 480 minus 3.1, and 560 minus 1.5. Okay. Yeah, but this is because we, this, what I turned on is just the LFO tool. And always after the processing, I will always insert this PAJ979, which I love a lot because it just set the position of the phase. And to be honest, it also, there's no science. I'm not measuring does it go well with the kick. I'm not tuning the kicks or so on. I'm just listening and I developed this skill to trust my ears and I basically love the results I'm getting and I'm trying to remove all the visual stuff that I said in some of the previous videos. So when it comes to why did I set this position of the phase, it's just because I like how it sounds on that position and that's all. Just felt that I'm getting a really, really nicer low end. And now we come to Melda M Spectral Dynamics. This plugin is amazing as it will look for the peaks in your frequent uh, sp uh, frequent range and you will, you will be able to set up the threshold on some position. So basically it is kind of some type of the frequent compressor. So it won't compress the whole signal, it will just look for the peaks on the frequent range and when it jumps over this uh, threshold you're setting it will just reduce it down and usually this is the easiest way when you design your bass line on the flat note and then when you start moving those you'll just hear that one note is louder and some of them are less loud uh, this is happening because all of the processing we have and for each notes it will just do the different thing and the best way to do that is just for me it's always to set up you can see that is just showing and compressing when the notes are changed and we have this peak in some of the frequencies yeah sorry for the buzzes because i'm recording video and i'm recording the everything and the project is a little bit higher <clears throat> and this is the blue cat where i showed you i am not doing the perfect aligning kick in the bass which i said already so this is a plugin where you i set two different chains of the same signal so i set this to some and basically what it does the baseline comes inside this one pre and it goes through one chain and then it doubles it, it creates two different signals. So in this position over here, I set up only the first part, first two notes of the bass line, basically the area of the kick. And I remove the volume of the second two 16s. And in this area, in this another chain, I set up opposite. So the first two notes, the first two 16s of the bass line will go through this chain and the second two will go through this chain. And now, in the area where the first two notes are going through in this chain, basically in the area where the kick is, I just set some kind of low, sh low shelf where I'm reducing for 15 decibels everything that's below 100. And that way I am solving the problem of phase coloration with between kick and the bass so i do not want to perfectly align them i do not want to change the tail of the kick because my bass line is on that note i do not want to change my kick i do not want to change my bass line because kick kick sounding like this or bass line is sounding like this i want to use the kick because i love how it sounds like that one and i'm designing my bass line and i design it to sound good as i want and then i just apply this and i'm safe from kick and the bass Actually, the bass be, uh, get in uh, not good face position with the kick. So this is the way I, how I solve it, and we can talk about it for as much as we want. But this is the best way for me to solve this problem. So this chain over here, it is like these two notes are going through this channel, 
and these two nodes are going into this one where I only have the LFO tool where I selected where I selected that I will just keep it. So it's two the same signals going. I just said like that it on this chain that it removes the first two nodes and in this one to do opposite. And then where this one, where the kick is, I just re reduced the whole low end. And that way I just kept the tail of the kick to have the full punch in this low end. And when the kick stops, I open the baseline to go as it, as it, as, as it does. So, why did I chose this video to as a remake of the complete sound design for the baseline is because this setup I believe is the best sounding baseline I ever did in Serum. And I just wanted to show you this one and I chose this note, uh, this MIDI with the jumping baseline just to that you are able to hear it how good it can sound. Now we come to that point if I want to bring the click more I can do it this way just by turning this high mid over here or I can go in the first one over here and I can just pump the transient of the high mids from 1k till 5k. Get a better click. And now what I said about the... I just need to recheck this everything. Yeah, okay. So... I just want to explain to you now what the this filter, double filter, can do. So, okay, I just need to make this to zero. Is now that on this second filter I can just reduce and now with the second filter I'm controlling how much of the body of that buzz it will have on the second part of the baseline. And that's all. This is the reason why I'm doing so. The first envelope is connected to the first filter and this is the moment where I'm designing how click it will be. And the best sounding clicks are always on 12 because it's just the slope. It doesn't create this kind of resonance sound on it. And the envelope 3 I basically connect to the second filter when I just from the second part of the baseline note I'm just clearing out all these buzzes and this is the best and the easiest way for me and yeah you can try it on and that will be all for this video thank you very much for watching and I see you soon with another video on my youtube channel bye ciao